OK, so let's look at key wrapping. And key wrapping involves us having a secret key and then using another key called the key encryption key to be able to protect uh, the, the key. So why would we do this? Well, in symmetric key encryption, we have the same key to encrypt as we do to decrypt. And obviously the encryption key will be stored somewhere possibly on the system. Let's say it's a file that we're encrypting and then decrypting. And we must thus store the file, this uh, encryption key somewhere. So we need to be able to protect it uh, from being discovered. Along with this, we might be using public key encryption with a private key and also a public key. So the public key can be known to anybody, but the private key must be kept secret and secure. So is it possible for us to protect these keys with a key encryption key so that they cannot be discovered if they're stored or even when they're used within a, a system. And so the method that we're going to look at is RFC 5649, which is an advancement from an RFC which defined the AES key encryption. And this RFC here extended that uh, RFC with uh, padding of the data. So what we have is that we'll define a plain text. And the plain text is actually the key that we're going to protect. Then it goes into our key wrapping system and we apply a key of the key encryption key. Okay, so the plain text is the key that we're putting in. It sounds a bit strange. Plain text is the key. We put it into the wrapping process and use our key encryption key to be able to uh, wrap the key. On the output, we'll have a wrapped key. And the wrap key can only be used when we unwrap with the key key. And we'll get back our key again, or our plain text. OK, so the plain text is actually the key in this case into the wrapping process with the key key. And then we with this the key, the wrapped key can be seen in public or could be viewed, but it's not possible to see the key underneath unless we have the KEK. -E so the basics of this is use the Feistel cipher created by Horst Feistel of, of IBM. And he created a, 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 a cipher which split the data into two bits, into two parts. These were 64-bit uh, data elements. And then, with the split, they were put into some uh, function. Normally, you would define that as an encryption function. And then a key is applied to that. Then, we XOR these two uh, values together and then flip the values over and do the same again. The advantage with it is that if we then do it all in reverse, then we just go through the same process as before. And that allows us to be able to easily reverse uh, this, this process that we, go, that we go through. So what we actually do is that we feed in our key here that we're trying to protect. So we feed in our key here, and we get our key back here. And then we apply the key EK here, and also uh, here for each of the uh, steps. Okay, and we use the exclusive OR operator because uh, that is that operator uh, it can be easily reversed. Okay, so that's XOR, XOR there. So here is the method that uh, the key wrapping system actually uses. So what we do is that we load up 
with an initial in, with an initialization vector into A, and then we take parts of the key, and these parts will be 64-bit uh, values from from the key. So if you're using 128-bit uh, key values, then we can load up uh, two uh, two of these plain text uh, elements. They go in, and then they're combined initially. The, this will be the first block in here, and then the A0, they can get concatenated, and then they go into uh, an AES process with the KEK here, the key encryption key. We then encrypt, and then we split the data into two, feed it round, and this is a counter value that we have here. This is a concatenation operator that, that we have, which takes the two 64-bit uh, blocks and concatenates them together. We then use uh, AES uh, here, and then we uh, eventually uh, we XOR with a T value to produce the new value, which goes into, into here. And again, we take the, the second part of the, uh, the key and put it into this element uh, here and concatenate again, put it through AES, and, and so on. And eventually we produce our cipher uh, output. On the reverse, we basically just do the inverse of that. So this is a countdown, and we're doing the reverse of what we did uh, here, uh, back, back again. So in this way, it's fairly easy for us to be able to wrap the key and also to unwrap it in there. We're using a very simple uh, AES method, typically with uh, ECB. So there's no real need for so the salt salting process within AES here. Uh, we have our initialization vector here if we really need to add salt. So then we create our 64-bit uh, output values and that becomes our wrapped key. And then we take these values and then put them through this reversing process and then we will get our key back again. Only by knowing the KEK -E we'll be able to do that reversing. So let's have a look at uh, key wrapping. So with this we have a key that we want to use here. So it might be to encrypt and decrypt a file. We then apply our key encryption key to wrap the key so we get a protected key here. We can then uh, back up that key, and without this key, key, it shouldn't be possible to reveal the contents of the key. Then we can use the key, key again to be able to unwrap again and we recover our key. One thing we could do is run this all in a trust environment, such as within uh, a cloud, trusted cloud uh, environment, where the keys and the key, key are never actually revealed outside of the trust environment. But we can still back up the keys from these ones that we wrap here. So this would allow us to have a backup of the keys. So if we had to recover the system, we would uh, be able to uh, feed them back into the unwrap. And the key key could actually be a static key which is embedded into the computer system that uh, we couldn't get access to, such as in a secure enclave. Okay, so here's the code, and I've just taken the code from this standard GitHub here. And for this, this is the, the basic method for unwrapping, and there's the wrapping. We can see here we're using an initialization vector, standard one, but if we need to, we could change that in there. Okay, so you can see we're using ECB uh, to encrypt and we're using the, the, the uh, KEK to be able to do that encryption process. And then this is allowing us to do the, the, uh, uh, the concatenation and exclusive OR with the counter and so on. Okay, so here's the main program here. We basically are just setting up a, a key, a, a hex key uh, KK and also we'll have a key that we're going to protect. Then we wrap it and we take the KK 
and the uh, the key. Uh, so in this case here, and we can see the plain text is the key, and there's no initialization vector in this case. And then we'll unwrap it to see if what we get. So basic test is this kk with this key should give us that as an output. So let's try this code. Okay, so there we go. And this test uh, works because we can see your key. There's the wrap key as the test vector that we saw, and there's the result there. So we'll just change this to AA to change our, our key. And we can see here it's changing the key there. We could change this to FF. Obviously, the key encryption key would be a random key, and also the key would also be random here. Okay, so we can see that's actually working there, and we can run the code if we want to be able to see this actually running here. Okay, so there was the test vector here, and I've just set up this hex pattern just to check uh, the, uh, the wrapping process, just to see if we get the right test vector, and uh, we see that we do, because that is the same as as that okay so that's taken from the rfc to be able to uh, generate that and there's our sample output there okay so it works on 64 bit uh, blocks so i've applied 128 bits here for a key but we could always obviously use 192 bits or 256 bits uh, for our key size so one way we can use this is to be able to generate the, uh, the the master key or the key encryption key from a password. So we could take a password. Uh, so this is the method that uh, Veracrypt and TrueCrypt use to be able to protect the encryption key on the disk here. And when the user wants to access an encrypted volume, they enter a password for it. So in this case, we'll generate some random salt, a random salt value. We take the user's password and we put it into key derivation functions such as pbkdfsdf2. We could also use bcrypt or scrypt. And those are good key derivation functions because um, they slow down the process and they will defeat uh, crackers who will try to paralyze the, uh, the hashing uh, cracking process. Okay, so this will create our key encryption key for us, and then we can keep that uh, secret. Sorry, we don't need to keep it secret in this case, because every time the user logs in, we just have to uh, use the password. So the key key doesn't have to be stored in this case, but whenever the user wants to access the disk, then the key, key can be revealed from the password and also the salt. So we need to make sure that we store the salt value uh, for the user to be able to uh, recover the same key, key. So then this key here is the key that's used uh, to be able to encrypt the disk. And then it will be the same key that's used uh, until uh, the disk is reset. So what we do is that we wrap the key with the key, key and the and the data key, and then that will produce our wrapped key with a salt value. Okay, so we can now store both the salt value and the wrapped key, or we can back up onto uh, an external disk or a USB stick so that we can always recover the wrapped key. So when the user wants to then uh, access the disk, they will feed in their password and we take the salt value and then we gen unwrap the stored key and that will recover back the encryption key that we can use to be able to uh, decrypt the data on the, on the disk. Okay, so here's the code here that we could use. So in this case, uh, we can either use pbkdfs2, 
with salt, uh, scripts, bcrypt, or if we want each, uh, each uh, key derivation function. This one is not really secure for generating passwords. The first three are, and what they have is a counter value or a difficulty value, which will slow the process down of uh, generating the hash, which will make it less susceptible to brute force. Okay, so once we have the keys, we can uh, easily, these are, this is a byte array. We then just, just feed that into the key encryption key. We feed our key that's used for the, uh, uh, for the encryption seal on the disk. And then hopefully we can recover back the key again. So here's a sample run for us using pbkdfs2 where we have a password and a salt value. We st only store the salt value and we store the key key here. Then that can get stored uh, on the system. Then when the user logs in and tries to access the encrypted disk, they will put in their password, will take the salt value and generate the same KEK, this one here, and then we'll take the wrapped key, this one, and we should be able to produce this key here, which is the key that's been used on the disk. So again, let's have a look at this one. And here we go. So we'll try um, a different one. We'll try bcrypt here. And there we go. So this is the original key. Uh, this is the wrapped key. And this is the unwrapped key. And you can see that it works uh, there. OK, so again, we can try the code out just to see if it works. OK, so let's put in a different key. So we'll put in a key of FF there and we'll see if that, that works. OK, so that's the key we're protecting. Uh, we apply the key key and then we should get the uh, unwrapped key uh, back again. OK, so in this way uh, we can uh, make sure that we we get our uh, Sorry, this this one. Yep. Yeah, so, so we get our key back again. Okay, so that's been an outline of key wrapping.